Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reading you Yeti Spaghetti by Samantha Hay, illustrated by Mark Beach. This is the contents. Chapter 1. Pe Peter was putting the final cherry on the giant jelly he was decorating when he heard a growl. Tingling taste buds, he groaned. The Yetis are back again. A big fairy face was peering through the kitchen window. Goo! growled the Yeti as it reached out a long hairy hand. Hey! yelled Peter. Stop! But it was too late. The Yetis, the Yeti had gone and so had half the jelly. Peter sighed that was the problem with living in the village of Skoki. The Yetis. A big gang of them lived in on the large snowy mountain above the village and every day they thundered down into town and made a nuisance of themselves. You see, Skoki was famous for food. Everyone who lived in the village was crazy about cooking. All day they diced and sliced and grilled and chilled, creating the most delicious dishes you've ever tasted. The food was so fabulous that people came from far and wide to try it. And so did the Yetis. They were everywhere, hanging around houses and growling at windows, trying to pinch tidbits of whatever tasty treats the villagers were making. Peter shook his head. It had to stop in two days' time. It would be an the annual Scoffy Cookery Competition, and there would be chefs entering from all over the world. Peter was hoping to be the youngest ever winner. He was already the best cooking scoffy, but more than anything, he wanted to win the competition and prove to the world that scoffy chefs were really were the best. The only problem was the yetis. Chapter 2 The mayor of scoffy called a meeting. Everyone came, including several yetis, who were sniffing around the refreshment tables. We've got to get rid of them, said the mayor, pointing at the yetis. If we can't, I'm cancelling the competition. I won't let Scoffy become <coughs> the laughing stock of the world, he said crossly. Peter sighed. His dreams of winning the Competition was sagging like soggy sardine sandwiches. Just then, a man in a dark cloak appeared. I believe you've got a yeti problem, said the mysterious stranger. Everyone nodded. Well, I might be able to help. The man whisked off his cloak to reveal a bright green pair of shorts and a tall hat with a huge red feather. I'm Yandel Yodeler, he said cheerfully. The mayor said, that's all I need. But before you could say another word, Yan began, Yodeloo! Peter pulled a face, it sounded awful. The yetis didn't like it either. They squealed, and squirm, growled and gurgled, and then ran away as fast as their big furry legs could carry them. It had worked, the yetis had gone. It was competition day and all the villagers were up early, icing and slicing, chopping and walking, all hoping their dishes would catch the eye of the head judge, Barry Belloni. Peter was working hard to decorate a huge pineapple cake. Proudly, Peter carried his cake to the town hall. There were, were the, the tables groaned with goodies. 
There were fabulous flans, wonderful waffles, lovely lasagnas, incredible ice cream. And right in the middle of the table, Peter placed his perfect pineapple cake. Just then, there was a mighty crash and the doors of the town hall were thrown open. Curdling custards! gasped Peter. It's a yeti! Grrr! The yeti growled. Everyone watched in horror. Everyone apart from Peter who had spotted something rather strange. The yeti was carrying a saucepan. Oh! screamed everyone except Peter. Dishes were dropped, spoons were scattered, and people dived under tables. And then Yan appeared. Yodely! Hey, stop yodeling! shouted Peter, whose nose had picked up the most delicious smell coming from the Yeti saucepan. No one heard him over the noise. Peter raced out over to the Yeti and peered into the saucepan. It looked like spaghetti? asked Peter. The Yeti nodded. Peter's mouth watered. The spaghetti glistened like gold. The sauce was the colour of rubies and it was the most Amazing spaghetti Pete had ever seen. There was no time to admire it. Yodely you! The, the yodeling was too much for Yeti. It clutched its saucepan to its chest and ran out of the door. Chapter 4 Enough was enough. Peter grabbed the first thing to his hand, which just happened to be his own perfect pineapple cake and flung it at Yan that stopped him. <clears throat> Be quiet, all of you, shouted Peter. Eventually, everyone was silent. That yeti wasn't dangerous, said Peter. Hairy bears aren't welcome here, insisted the mayor. But you don't understand, said Peter. I think he wants to enter a cooking competition. Everyone burst out laughing. Don't be silly, exclaimed the mayor. Yetis can't cook. Now let's get on with the judging. And that was that. Peter felt like crying. Not only had the yeti any spaghetti had been sent away, but Peter's perfect pineapple cake was ruined. And there was no point in staying. With a heavy heart and a tear in his eye, Peter left the hall and headed home. Chapter 5 Peter wasn't the only one crying. Sitting outside the town hall, sniffling into his saucepan, was the big hairy yeti. Peter sat down next to him and, despite feeling gl glum, his tummy rumbled. The spaghetti smelled so good. The yeti stopped sniffling and held his saucepan to Peter. You want me to try it? asked Peter hopefully. The Yeti nodded. Peter dipped his finger into the sauce and tasted. Kazo! His taste buds lit up like fairy lights. Wowzers! he gasped. It's delicious! And then suddenly an idea popped into his head. Peter picked up the saucepan and dashed back into the hall where the judging was nearly over. Carefully and quietly, so that nobody spotted him, Peter placed the saucepan at the end of the table. A small man appeared with an enormous spoon. It was the head judge, Barry Baloney. He dipped his spoon into the saucepan tasted the spaghetti a smile appeared on his face <laughs> it's good he said he dipped the spoon again and tasted more it's very good he said smacking his lips together and grinning in fact it's the best forget the rest this spaghetti is the winner chapter six 
Who created this masterpiece? Boomed the mayor. Peter stepped forward. That's Yeti spaghetti, he said, pointing out the saucepan. And the chef who made it is the poor Yeti you frightened away earlier. Did someone say Yeti? Said Jan, appearing suddenly, still covering Peter's pineapple cake. Yes, I did," said Peter sternly. "But don't even think of yodeling, or you'll get the pan of spaghetti on your head too." Jan zipped his lips while Barry Baloney reached out and tasted some cake that clinging on top of Jan's head. Delicious, and he reached for some more. The mayor folded his arm crossly. A yeti cannot win this competition. No, he can't. Not on his own, because this cake is tip top too. I've decided you have two winners: yeti spaghetti and this perfect pineapple cake. Everyone is shocked and stunned and a bit put out, but not for long. Soon the celebrations began. And the Yeti and Peter shared a big golden cup, which they carried proudly around the village for all to see. All the Yeti turned out to be terrific cooks, which was why they'd been hanging around Scoffy, bothering everyone. They were desperate to share recipes, and Scoffy became even more famous for its amazing Yeti chefs. The only person who wasn't pleased was Yan, because now that the Yetis were welcome in Scoffy, yodeling was definitely off the menu. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button down below. Bye.